G'day guys, today we're going to do a question that regards compound interest. Um, I have done this exact same question using simple interest before, so if you want to check out my other video, I'll provide a link for it. But today we're going to do compounding interest. Now the way that this differs from simple interest is that simple interest, when we have a particular number at a percentage rate for a particular time, what this basically says is simple interest will go, we will give the uh, person who borrows the money or the person who is investing the money 6% of our principal every year for nine years. So 14,000, 6% of that is $840. So with simple interest, we are just going to give $840 to the monopoly man each year for nine years. Cool. And what ends up happening is we end up paying $7,560 in interest for simple interest. And now the way that compounding interest differs from this is that the interest calculation resets every time period. Now, you might say, well, Harold, what the hell does that mean? Well, let's go through it from through first principles. Now, if I'm borrowing, I'm the guy who's trying to get the racehorse, so I'm borrowing $14,000 from the Monopoly man. So what I'm going to do is he gives me these terms, and in the first year, I borrow, my that I've borrowed my $14,000, I'm going to have to pay him back $14,000, well I'm not going to pay him back the principal, but I'm paying him back 6% of it which is going to be 6 over 100. And that's again, it's equal to $840. Now, the way that compounding interest differs from simple interest is that this number here in simple interest will just be taken aside and then the next year we will calculate the same thing from the same principal. Now what this compounding interest formula does is it adds what we owe now onto the principal and then recalculates. So this was in year one. So in year two, we have rather than 14,000 to calculate our interest on, we have $14,840. And then we're going to times that by your 6%. And what we get is $890 dollars. and 40 cents. So I'll do this one more time. So what this is going to then do is it's going to add to our, our principal. And we're going to have 15,730. So now we owe 15,730. And we're going to again times that by 6%. 15,730.4 times by 6% is Cool. So we could go on and on and on like this for nine years. But what you're seeing here is you're seeing that the amount that we're having to pay in interest, see in the simple interest, the interest rate or the like the, the dollar value of what we're paying each year in interest is fixed at a certain amount. 
Now in compounding interest, the reason it's called compounding is because the interest compounds in terms of what we get here is we rather than having 840 again, we have a this $50 approximately, which is the difference between these two, which is our interest that we've earned on the interest that we've already earned. So you can see that rather than go out the money that we're owing, going up in a linear fashion like you'd expect with simple interest. So like it goes up exactly the same each year. Compounding interest has a more of an exponential style growth to it. So you'll always earn more money with compounding interest. Okay, then you say to me, well, what have, how do we get to the final value of nine years without going through each iteration of this? Well, good question. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look at this pattern and we're going to try and derive ourselves a formula. So what we've got here is to get from 14,000 to 14,840, I had to get 6% of my value and then I added it onto my original value. Now the way we can do that using um, using just one simple formula to get from here straight to here is rather than just multiplying it by 6 over 100, we can say that this value here is 106% of this value, as in it's itself plus 6%. So we can go 14,000 times by 1.06 is equal to 14,840. Now, what we can do here is to get from year one to say, let's say year four, we would go, we'd find the value at t equals zero, 14,000. We then go, all right, well, to get to year one, I'm going to times by 1.06. To get it to year two, I'm going to times by 1.06. Hopefully you guys can see the pattern. To get to year three, I'm going to times by 1.06. To get to year four, I'm going to times by 1.06. And we can... Work that out to be 17.674 and 68 cents. Now, hopefully all you guys are familiar with what we could do to make this a little bit less like time consuming to put into the calculator. This is also equivalent to just writing 14,000 times 1.06 the power of 4. Okay, so what we can also then do is we can, well, and we realize, well, this is for Y4 or year 4. So, for year 6, it would be 1.06 to the power of 6. For year 300, it would be 1.06 to the power of 300. We're asked to find it at year 9. So we can work out, well then, the amount we're going to owe will be equal to fourteen grand times by one point zero six to the power of nine. And that equals twenty three six five two and seventy one cents. Now, that 
is in contrast when we did this question with simple interest the simple interest equivalent to this was equal to 21,560 So you can see, six five two seventy one subtract twenty one five sixty. There's a value of two thousand and ninety two dollars and seventy one cents, which is what we call. interest on interest. So basically this is the compounding effect here, which gives us an extra $2,092.71 over the term of the loan. So you can see here that this um, compounding interest is basically just what happens is rather than just getting a fixed interest component and just adding it to the amount owed every single year, like here, 840 added, like so if it's year three, we'd have three lots of it, year four would be five, four lots of it, year five would be five lots of it. The compounding interest, what it does is we're just going to get our, so the, the value, the future value of our money, or what we owe, is going to be equal to the principal multiplied by one, plus the interest rate, which is as, well, let's do as a fraction, to the power of n, or the number of years. So we have, here we have the future value of what we're gonna owe in the future. In the case of this question, it ended up being this much. P is the principal or our value. This is what we, um, the dollar amount at T equals zero. The R is our rate. And what we have to do is we have to convert it into a fraction over a hundred. We add it to itself so we can keep on compounding it as the years go by. And N is obviously the number of years. So it's quite a simple formula. You'll notice that the um, this is a basic compounding interest where you have the interest is compounded yearly. You can get ones where it's compounded monthly, daily, second, but second by second. Now, basically, the the things you have to note with these, like let's see if we can find some space. That's not going to work as a color. Things that we have to no note is that. The amount of money you get from compounding interest will always be bigger than the simple interest component at the same rate for all things considered. Now for compounding interest, um, more compounding periods equals more dollars or more money. So the compounding interest is always bigger than the simple interest. And the more compounding periods we have, the more money. And the difference between the compounding and simple interest, so the compounding interest amount minus the simple interest amount for the same period at the same interest gives us also, this interest on interest component. So that's basically all you really would need to know about um, basic compounding interest. I'll do a video concerning like a bit more advanced version where the compounding interest, the compounding periods differ and stuff like that. But apart from that, this is basically all you need to know. If you can get your head around all of these small like details, I'm pretty sure you'll be fine. So if do us a favor, guys like the video, subscribe to my channel. I try and put out videos all the time. And if you have any problems with any of things you're doing at school, send us a message and I'll uh, give, it, give it a go and try and solve it for you. 
But until next time, thanks for watching and um, yeah, see you then.